All right, so a couple of new thoughts that I had on more to do with back training. Uh, this is another video that has to do with a similar topic with regards to scapular movement and what you do with your back and the upper back shoulder blades when you're going through a back exercise from any plane, whether it's a horizontal plane or vertical plane for your pulls. Okay. Um, in previous videos, you've seen me talk about scapular mobility and the importance to have movement when you go through a pressing exercise. You've seen me talk about arching during pull-ups and what, what a proper arch position should look like in order to engage the back muscles when you're training. And you've seen me talk about uh, different things depending on how long your arms are, how much muscle you carry in order to properly activate muscle tissue of the back. So this topic that we're talking about now is uh, has to do with within the repetitions that you're performing what you look like when you're doing this exercise. So what a lot of people like to do when they do a pull exercise of any sort, whether it's a horizontal or a vertical pull, is they like to set their shoulders the way they should, but hold on to that the entire time that they're doing their set. And that's where a problem raises. Let me show you what I mean in this uh, lat pull down. So what people like to do is they hold on and they get set up properly. They set their shoulders once, and they go through all their reps while keeping the shoulders locked in like that. So those people are reasoning that they've depressed their shoulders for the one time and they're holding that lock down in order for them to go through the entire range of motion for a set of 5, 10, 15 reps, whatever it is, and then that's okay because their back will be engaged the entire time. Well, unfortunately, I don't think personally that this is the case and that this is going to sort of ring true as your set continues. And the reason why is because you have to think about what the smaller muscles that are responsible for that retraction and depression are doing. So when you do a pull down or a row or something like that, you set your shoulders the one time and then you're essentially holding an isometric with those muscles like your rhomboids and your lower traps in order to keep your shoulder blades in that place over the course of you know, 20 seconds or however long it takes to finish a set, there's a good chance that those muscles are going to weaken in their isometric contraction. It's just like anything. If you try to do another exercise while holding a muscle tight the whole time, like a plank for example, chances are after an extended period of time you're going to lose form, especially if you're doing something else with your extremities. So in the case of this, you get your set up, you set your shoulders the one time, you try to do your rep, especially if it's heavy, you're going to start creeping up and then your form is going to start looking bad as you go through your set. It's going to be like that instead of where it belongs when it started. So this is why I encourage people to reset their shoulders between every repetition. It allows for a little bit more blood circulation in those smaller muscles. It allows for a dynamic movement so the muscles don't have the chance to get fatigued as quickly, in my opinion, because they have the chance to relax and contract again. So again, the revised version of this would look something like this. You set your shoulders, pull, release, and set again. So doing it that way ensures that you're actually going to get the max contraction of the back muscles and the muscles that are to depress and retract the shoulders in order to perform the lift effectively and properly. So the same thing can be translated if you're doing a seated row. So even if I just come here. Instead of setting once and going through all your reps with locked, locked uh, shoulder blades like that, allow for that scapular mobility to enter and reset on every repetition. And it's going to be a lot more effective for you to hit your back muscles more appropriately and uh, fully for each repetition for the duration of your entire set. So that's a really important point that uh, people have to, even if they're using the right form and they have the right intention and they're using the right way to initiate the movement, you have to let go of it so your scapula can stay mobile, number one, and number two, so that your back can re-engage between every rep and it'll ensure that you're using the right form and technique. So that's it.